today from Ford Field in Detroit. It's week 14 of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Detroit Lions taking on the Seattle Seahawks. First opened in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And, of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with the Seattle Seahawks. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And, Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They come in playing pretty good football. Winners of four of their last six games. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they've got a full half season since their last loss. Winners of eight in a row. And you don't get on win streaks like this without your defense playing a big role. They've created quite an identity, and I know they want and expect this streak to get to nine. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They will be led out by a second-round pick in 2019. Out of Missouri, it's Drew Locke. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl-type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. Play action. Now it's Locke. And his first pass is incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. To throw on second and ten. Locke looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Carson. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. It's a big play there for Seattle. That catch for his career is number 589, so 11 away from 600, but it also right now ties him with Hall of Famer Fred Boletnikoff. And we remember Fred Boletnikoff well because of the way he went about his business in catching the football. And we're seeing something similar here. Someone who runs precise routes, has excellent hands, and knows how to get the ball to the end zone. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Again, it's Locke. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. A great effort there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there. That nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. Point after here coming up. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. Five plays there on that drive. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. 
it's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, he's, so, not, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that told me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. White's throw taken in by Edwards. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. First carry for DeAndre Swift. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Out of the gun, it's White. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. This is taken at the 23. Nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time, we give you a look at what's going on there. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown, Seahawks. D.K. Metcalf, his 21st touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks get the quick strike touchdown. There's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure to just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And Charles, you look at these two teams, and these are those kind of litmus test games in the second half of the season that if you're a coach or a player, you can either really look forward to them or really dread them, depending on your point of view. And if you're dreading them, you're not going to go very far in the playoffs. You need to look forward to these kind of games because here we've got two division leaders, both real contenders for the NFC title. And you're right. You love having easy games on your schedule, but you need some games like this to toughen you up a bit and ensure that you're ready for the shock of playoff football. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rally to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every... Now White lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. Defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. 
Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. On play action, lock. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. A great play there. His 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 21 to nothing. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield, punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. The throw over the middle taken in. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and in inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now White with a first down throw. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. White looks to throw. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And some space here. And finally, he is out of bounds, but not before taking it down near the 15. A big play there for Detroit. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Back to the running game with Swift. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. Now White. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. 21 0, our score after one. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. From the shotgun, here's White. Flush to it, and he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Off play action, here's White. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Lions are able to cut into this lead. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. It's up. It's good. And that'll cut the lead to 21 to 7. That time, a nine play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. And it'll 
be a touchback as Tyler Lockett says, I'm not going to return this one. And you want to talk about active hands. These guys, these defensive backs, these linebackers, they've had active hands. Almost reminds you of those great basketball teams, the ones that really defend. And we talk about the length that they have and able to get their hands on balls and have deflections and knock them away. That's what we're seeing here. Very difficult to get a pass into a receiver because there's always someone in the lanes. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it could be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now a play fake, and here's Locke. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden... And he's got it! What a catch on the sideline! A big play that time through the air. 38 yards. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And i got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Winds up a very good call there defensively to challenge that one as that now will wind up an incomplete pass. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Lions will take over. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense tonight. Taking it right down Broadway. Touchdown, Detroit. A big play there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Lions strike quickly here for six points. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of play you would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. So the extra point good, and the roughing call going to move the ball out to the 50 for the kickoff. And I think this is a good chance to pin them deep if you can land the kickoff inside the five-yard line or so. Gain some field position for your defense. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. We see Drew Locke in the offense coming back on. And how about the start so far, Charles? Three first-half touchdown passes. And that's how you generate excitement on a team keep your offense moving at a really high level and it's also how you establish leadership by playing that well three touchdown passes that's the way to lead now he's just hoping for number four that's what we're used to seeing from him right there plays like that why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage able to make adjustments all along the way doesn't matter where he lines up where he releases from working his way into the secondary figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open and it'll be incomplete good job staying with him defensively and it'll bring up second down 
Lock off a of play action. Rolling to his left. He finds his man complete. It's Hodges. And he'll take this all the way down to the 15-yard line. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. And the Lions are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. So the interception there, and Charles, I'd imagine that's something you can maybe live with in December, but not come January. And I love how you make the distinction there. You're talking about regular season versus the postseason, the playoffs. Because these guys, they've already clinched the playoff spot, but they know, looking ahead, when they get into the postseason, they've got to take better care of the football because turnovers at that situation, they really become magnified. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Now here's a throw that's complete. His second catch, and this one not nearly as electrifying as... First, and it'll bring up third down now. They'll roll him out right. White's got a first. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here. So it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Following the fumble recovery, it's Locke. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. But well, defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Block now to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. Scoring summary. Three-play drive. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. DeAndre Swift heading back out with his Detroit teammates. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's White. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. On first down, it's White. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. 
That catch good for only a couple. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would admit that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. To throw, White. He'll find Swift out of the backfield. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. That'll give him eight that time, and it'll be fourth down. Now the Lions, they send out the field goal unit here. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright, and this score will stay right where it is. Always disappointing when you miss a field goal, but when you're playing against a defense this good, you and I both know that's a crucial miss because you can't afford to leave any points out there. You've got to take them when you can. They fake the handoff. Now Locke dumps this one off to Chris Carson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores around the NFL here in a busy week 14. We'll start out with an AFC East matchup between Buffalo and the New York Jets. And it is the Jets who have the lead in that one. Zach Wilson has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, we'll head down to Charlotte to check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And they currently trail the visiting Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Lastly, let's get out to Jacksonville. See what's happening with the Jaguars at TIAA Bank Field. And they trail the visiting Ravens in that one at halftime. J.K. Dobbins, a touchdown run in that first half. In the game you're watching, it's been Drew Locke with a strong first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. football to start the second half and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports and we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback the Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three and they trail here to begin the second half what's going to be a key for them to get back in the game I think they're right there and I think this game is still up for the taking for them because we always talk about turnovers. They had two of them in the first half. And once you start talking about... There he goes, right side. The 30. 10. Touchdown, Detroit. DeAndre Swift, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Lions come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. 
That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. We see Drew Locke in the offense coming back on. And we have seen him to this point with four touchdowns. We get a glance at his work. It's been good work. Oh, it's been excellent work, and it's made so much better by our guys. Look at that montage of great <laughs> plays that they put together. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you speak it pretty well. But these guys, the pictures they put up, oh. so very good, and he's got his team in the lead right now. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. On the move to his left. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, that was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try to pass downfield that fell incomplete. Well, he's got to have that wrong, doesn't he? They, they decline there. There's no doubt about it. Sorry to step on you there, partner. But let's go ahead and run this one together, right? Incomplete pass, yet they call pass interference, and somehow you're going to decline that I'm penalty. so confused. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's on the tackle, Panay Sewell. Here's a handoff to Swift. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. I have to think a major focus at the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Now White. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now it's Lockett. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Now Locke steps away. White's got a first down and more. And all the way up to the 46. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. On first and ten, here's Locke. Out to his left. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. They look to throw. It's Locke rolling to his left. And he floated one out there incomplete. But plain and simple, 
That's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to it? Maybe his he rhythm confused, is just off. He's know. got thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. They find some open field here. Touchdown. Chris Carson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And a lead now up to 14. A drive there of just four plays. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Another shot now for this Lions offense. On first and ten, it's Swift. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. White. Over the middle complete. That's Mason. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. The corner, Stephon Gilmore on the stop. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. White's throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. DeForest Buckner, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Back to throw. White. And he's got it. And in for the Lions. Touchdown. T.J. Hawkinson with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Lions have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Blankenship out for the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So that drive in total eight plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. 
So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, and then, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable, so they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. They'll let this go for the end zone. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. DK Metcalf, touchdown number 22 on the season. And the Seahawks add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. The extra point up and good, and the lead now up to 14. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Lions offense heading out as we give you a look at the playoff race coming into the weekend in the NFC. And I tell you, four weeks still to go and everything is wide open and it's fun. And I know we always talk about, well, if the playoffs were to begin today, and then we kind of go, okay, but they're not. Let's see how it plays out. Wouldn't it be fun to play with this playoff lineup right now? Because to me, just about anyone can win this whole thing out of this grouping we currently have. And by the time we get there, it may look entirely different. Second down and seven. From the gun. White and this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. The Lions on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and seven. Operating from the gun. White. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Now, remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. That'll back to PAT up from the 15 to the 20. And with the advent of that rule, moving the PAT back to the 15-yard line to begin with, they were no longer kicking normal extra points, were they? They were kicking field goals. This is a longer field goal attempt for him, even though it's only for an extra point. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. So the flag backed him up five yards to the seven. They still get the two-point conversion, though. Now, was that confidence in the play call they had and in their offense or just absolute disdain for the defense? <laughs> it worked. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And fresh off the pick six, they've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, 
He's going to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. It all comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I don't know where that comes from. It yeah. just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. It's deep in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Throwing again on second down. Right. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. They tried to throw on second down. Unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Ball had his hands on it. Couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Now they got to get to the line quickly. The play fake, now White. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, White, and this time he's got the hookup, it's complete, and he'll go out near midfield at the 49. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. From the gun, White, catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And the result here, a pickup of eight, leaves him with two to go on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 29-yard line. On first and 10, White. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And now they're in the hurry up. From the 22, White. Wide open receiver complete. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Again, he'll drop to throw. Caught on the slant. Touchdown! A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Lions have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. They'll try and throw for it. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. And he'll be pulled down, and now a late flag will come with it. And that's in the area of a face mask, I think. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. A lot going to throw it here. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Fair to say the secondary play, whichever side you're on, hasn't really been a glowing exhibition so far, but a nice job there to prevent a long completion. I agree with you, but at some point, someone had to make a play and try and stop this exhibition of almost speed racing that we've been watching, huh? Yeah, it has been quarterback and receiver dominated. And this will be caught by Metcalf for the Seahawk touchdown. DK Metcalf with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Seahawks stretch this fourth quarter lead even further, and they are closing in on win number 12 of the season. The extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line.
The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of the... Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 16. And the Seahawks come up with a late turnover. But it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game is now officially over. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. As an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Seahawks, the win moves them to 12-1 and now on the year. And they'll return home next week to take on the New Orleans Saints. Meanwhile, for the Lions, they can ill afford to drop too many more as they fall to 7-6 and on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner.